Hello and welcome to a very special episode of the TF Cast. Today with us, and point the camera at her for a second, we have Megan, our surprise guest, who shows up unannounced. <laughs> Every time. But <laughs> if you don't know about Megan, Megan is a good friend of ours who used to be in Beige Interior with us and was integral in the forming well, not the foot. She were, you were just around when Triple Falls started, so you're really important to us, and we love you. And I think a lot of people mm-hmm. probably, you know, want to know things about you and how you're doing and what's going on. And yeah, you know. So, uh, welcome back to to the Mankato area. Yes, it's good to be back. Yeah, we've put together a list of hard hitting questions, and uh, we're gonna. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't know what we're gonna talk about. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is my problem. Every single time I get in the room with you guys, I just can't help but I start laughing. <laughs> this one might have a little bit more of a loose feel. A little, uh... yeah. <sighs> yeah, so what's up? <laughs> <laughs> it's, your, it's your cue. All right. Um, I mean, I've been in Las Vegas for about two years now, so that's longer than I thought I was honestly going to stay there. Yeah, oh, it, two years. Mm-hmm. That's wild. Um, that is I actually kind of, I always forget that 2020 happened. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, I, like, I don't think of it like a year. I thought of it as like a, a time lapse where things just like, but I, I guess, yeah, it was a year already. Um, what's, uh, what's, what's been, what's been like with the, with the pandemic over there? Oh things God. It's goofy. Interesting. I would say it's definitely interesting because, um, Las Vegas is pretty much known to be a tourist spot because of the strip. And Mm -hmm. so that's the kind of people that it really brings in. Um, So there hasn't been much travel, obviously. And that's kind of backfired on them. They're like losing money right now. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, what can you really do? So it's probably like the first time they've just shut down their tourist industry for any period of time. What, Like, what are the the locals like? (laughs) Let me just say that uh, Minnesota brings better people to the table. <laughs> I don't know if people in Las Vegas are going to watch this and be like, wow. Rude. This rude. So rude. <laughs> A local show. We actually, I don't think it makes it that far, but we can. Well, we can. I have people on Facebook who live in okay. Las Vegas. Okay, well, they're going to they're gonna get it. Yeah, Triple Falls, Las Vegas shade episode. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, no, the strip and the casinos have never shut down. Like this is the first time probably in history that Las Vegas has completely shut down to a point where nothing was open except for drive throughs Oh, really? So you couldn't get in a casino or go do those oh, things? Oh, you couldn't. You couldn't even stay in them. You'd have to stay like in the different hotels that they had off the strip. They didn't even have them open for people to stay in them. Weird. Huh. I, I would have imagined that they would have like closed down a little bit. Or, um, I don't know, you know, like they would have tried to get someone in there. I mean, because casinos can't lose. They're just like money printing machines for the people who own them, I think. Mm. I don't know. I don't know anything about casinos. I shouldn't talk. <laughs> well, um, what, what, what sort of things are you working on uh, <clears throat> back when you were here in Mankato? I know it was a lot of musical projects you came up with, uh, through like a lot of the open mic scenes around here. And uh, yeah, what, what have you been, had going on with uh, either music or any other kind of a creative venture? So as you guys know, like you're more of the technical people and I, I pretty much just showed up and sang a bit, wrote some music, did mm-hmm. all that fun stuff. A lot and of freestyling. Yes, a lot of freestyling. That was fun. I miss that. But... I tried or am currently trying to get into production stuff like with, you know, music editing and producing, which has been a struggle, but there is YouTube and they teach you a lot of things on YouTube. Um, And I have capabilities of recording now. So I've been doing that just kind of figuring everything out using logic. Mm, What's kind of like the the uh, scene like in Las Vegas for aspiring musicians. What do you what do you do out there when you're trying to hustle music? Uh, I would honestly, for any aspiring musician, 100% do not recommend going to Las Vegas to pursue your career because it's the music scene out there is very dead. I don't think anyone's looking mm. for unique individuals to you know take 
anywhere. Like if you're not in California, then you're probably not going to make it Hmm. in Las Vegas. Hmm. Well, there's a whole bunch of work though, right? Like you could like, they don't, they have like all the time shows going on at casinos and like normal times and like, like big productions that are happening where they need like, you know, singers of all types and stuff. There's a lot of casting calls. And that was one of those things that I had planned on doing before COVID really hit. Um, They do have like theatrical casting calls. They do have backup dancers, backup singers, backup models. And you can find these on apps and even on Instagram If you know the right people, you just kind of submit a little bit of information and then they might pick you out of a handful of people. Mm -hmm. So there is stuff for that. And being so close to California, if you're willing to go over there frequently, there's opportunities there. But to be an independent artist or an independent musician, it's not the place. It's not it doesn't have that creative background Mm -hmm. to it. And I there's people are traveling there for probably like the more big stages and like the national acts that are coming through. There's just, is there like any kind of local music scene there in Vegas that just the, you know, the savvy locals are into or whatever? Um, karaoke is a big thing out there. And like for any person who's a singer songwriter, karaoke does not like, it does not equal open mic. They're mm. quite different. Mm. But I would say that for karaoke, that can also lead into other things. Like if you're singing frequently at those places, you can also get them to put you up in that spot because that's what I did with the Sand Dollar. They're really well known for blues and jazz. And I found a couple of people there that I worked with for a little while um, just doing covers of like Tracy Chapman and stuff like that. But that's probably one of the only well-known open mic spots yeah i guess it's just not really that type of place Mm. i it like las vegas is i i've never been there so like thinking about it as a like a like trying to understand what actually goes on is kind of difficult for me you know Mm -hmm. like where do the people even live because you think of las vegas and you envision like a, a a strip of hotels and casinos and all this crap but like where like where do the people who are there live like that's a really good question because i think that when i tell people i live in las vegas they don't actually know anything outside of the strip so if you're looking at it on a map you have the strip that comes down the middle and then it's kind of divided into four different areas and then you have like north vegas you have summerlin area henderson and then there's like east which is sprinkled across the middle And you probably don't want to live in East just because that's where most of the violence from the strip happens. But I live in Henderson, so I live way out in like more of a residential area. Mm -hmm. That's probably, I would say, 25 minutes away from the strip. Oh, really? So it's like a different city almost? Kind of. It's still technically Las Vegas, but it's far enough away from the center that it's kind of its own place. Is it like a suburb? Suburb of Las Vegas? Yeah, it's definitely like a suburb. That's cool. Hmm. Dope. never been either. (laughs) But it sounds like an interesting place to be, especially through all this. Like, I think a lot has changed for, I guess, for any place that really relies on entertainment or, or gathering people. Like, um... I'm sure that LA and uh, Vegas Vegas and New York are just a whole kind of different place. I mean, even here in Mankato, we've had a lot of changes resulting from the pandemic, uh, different places closing or, or shutting down or, uh, I mean, music stopping. I don't know. I haven't seen live music happening in any serious capacity and don't know when that, when that will be brought back. So... I think a lot of things might just end up getting better. And I'll use churches for an example in this one, because a lot of churches had to go like super duper digital and like broadcast all of their stuff and like upgrade their capacity to work online. And when people adapt to like, I mean, a lot of the world just exists online now. So like going forward, like it's not like that new infrastructure, people adapting to being better online is going to stop they're Mm going to be better online and we're going to have more opportunities in the real world 
is I think the most optimistic thing I can pull out of this, yeah. you know? And I, I think, I, I do think more places will do that because people are trying, you know, like. Mm -hmm. Well, I think there's a, a like a, you're talking about the hybrid, hybrid uh, in-person digital kind of thing. Mm -hmm. one, one of the like ways I was looking at that was, I mean, prior to the shutdown, uh, e even for Triple Falls, our production capabilities were a little bit more limited to like running a live show, whereas now it would almost be just as easy to run a full video production at the live show. And so then you've got like some hybrid capture of uh, performance um, and and that's kind of a cool space to be in, I think. Um, and a lot, a lot of things are like that where they've evolved their their digital elements to be to be a little bit cooler i think there are some things that people just say that are untrue about that stuff too like i i've heard people like kind of assert previously that video like of an event that's currently happening might stop people from going there mm -hmm. but i just don't i don't believe that at all like you just the way people have responded to places <clears throat> being like trying to recreate themselves in a digital space people just want to be at a bar at 10 p.m. Like that's what they want to be. Like that's as in integral as the music being good, in my opinion. Because mm. that's the atmosphere. I think we're social creatures and regardless of how far we move forward virtually, there's always going to be that need or that desire to commingle with other people. I don't think that's mm -hmm. ever going to go away is being in a space and sharing that space with other people regardless of whether you know them or not. It just provides you a sense of comfort. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, before it shows too, like there was always, uh, I guess people who really wanted to be there for, like for the social element. And then there were other people who didn't like the social part, but like if they wanted to go see the music, they had to. So, um, adding a digital element to that would let, I guess, like people get it in, in the form that works best for them too. Mm -hmm. Cause like, yeah. And you could have the people who weren't wanting to mosh just stay at home and watch online. And then you got all the mosh people there just moshing like they do. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> and maybe I, I, I just think people will, always, <clears throat> people will always go. It's irreplaceable, you know, mm -hmm. like the, the, the volume too, like the sheer volume of a show is something that I just can't, like I could, I could in my own home, but it's just not, that energy isn't there. Mm. Yeah. Um, a lot of DJ streams, I've tuned into a couple of those and it doesn't hit the same way. Like I'll find I, anything that's like really high energy. I'm like, nah, like this isn't it. It doesn't translate well to your like casual living room listening session. Careful, they'll revoke your DJ license. <laughs> <laughs> they might. Yeah. I don't know. Be interesting to see where it all heads, but I'm optimistic too. I think, uh, you know, it, once once it's safe to to organize people, that that'll that'll change the way that um, a lot a lot of entertainment and industries like ours will continue to they'll evolve forward. Um, so yeah, you uh, got any any cool? Uh I know you worked with some, done a little bit of performance out there, but you got any cool like Vegas performance stories or like stories from, from the, uh, I don't know, whatever it is. I have a lot of cool stories. They're just different kinds of performances. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're allowed to say whatever you want on the podcast. Um, you know, that's, that's up to you. Um, but uh, yeah, well, what's in the cards then? What's what's not to make a cards joke, but uh, you know what's coming up? What's, Get uh, on Vegas cards, eh? Um, I mean, for me personally, I don't see myself staying in Vegas much more long term than probably the end of my current lease. Uh, just for the fact that you know it was cool. I learned a lot. I don't think I would have learned the amount that I did life wise if i would have stayed here the whole time mm -hmm. so i don't regret that i don't regret that little detour that i took but i also know that like if i'm serious about pursuing music as a career that's not going to be the place that i want to do it so for mm -hmm. me probably not going to stay there but 
Vegas will move on. They're already moving up to 50% capacity in all public places. And they are opening their pools, their pool clubs and their nightclubs again. Um, they're just keeping people kind of in little cube areas throughout that. So they're already trying to get back on things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're they're right next to Texas too, right? Like, yeah. I, I actually couldn't even, like, I, I could look at a map and tell you where Las Vegas is, but I can't imagine it right now. I'm operating at like 50% capacity today. I'm sorry. Uh, right next to California, Vegas, and Arizona. So, and Utah. Mm. But I don't think people are popping in Utah right now. <laughs> Utah is weird. Utah is definitely weird. It's totally weird. <laughs> I went to Park City um, a few months ago. They got to have food on the table if you got booze, right? That's their thing. Yeah. <clears throat> and also with the booze, like they have it already pre-programmed in their little things. So it's like, hey, bartender, hook me up with an extra shot of whatever in that. And they can't. Like they cannot serve more than one shot per drink. And oh, you guys know it's me. metered. Oh, yeah. You guys know me, though. So I was not happy about that. I was like, well, this is not as fun as it could be. Yeah, well, I like the idea of chips, like just in general. Like I'm a fan, mm. you know, any potato, corn. Just That's a, why I love Mexican restaurants. Yeah, no, I, they bring the <laughs> chips to the table. I'm like, oh. Like if it was like a cocktail napkin, except it was a bowl of chips all the time. Like I am in favor of that type of government overreach, you know, <laughs> the chips kind. <laughs> it's better than peanuts. If yeah. someone puts peanuts in front of me at a bar, I'm not touching them. I don't know what. Mm, yeah. No. You know, I've always wanted to say this, but I actually like very little re- repulses me as much as the peanuts on the floor in a Texas roadhouse. And I don't know why. <laughs> like, I know it's not like I, there's just something about like walking on is them. It the crunch. The it, crunch it, it might be you. the crunch. I don't know what it is. And like I, I've eaten in worse places. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I've eaten in places that are filthy, not even restaurants, just to, by the way of my life. But for some reason, the peanuts on the floor, it's, I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> he got all into it. He was like, I need this to be said. Yep. We were going to meander today. We said it at the beginning. It's on the air now. It's out there. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> peanuts. <laughs> But yeah, Texas Roadhouse, uh, quit that. That's the new one. Next to the canned corn or the cream corn, you should get a peanut on there. Yeah, absolutely not. <laughs> like a crunched on a floor peanut? Yes. <laughs> crunched on a <the> floor peanut. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, um, uh, we were talking about, let, let's do a little like dive back into the beige interior project because I think that there's some there's some stuff there that um, maybe hasn't been communicated to the to the internet world or or something. Um, well, I I can talk about all the conversations that we've had about it, and because uh, okay, when when Megan left, it was like we were just we basically shelved the project. They were mm-hmm. devastated. Yes, we were devastated. Were. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, it basically just kind of stuck around because I want, I really never stopped wanting to perform. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, I don't think that I'm ever going to stop making music that I would want to cause to call Beige Interior. Mm-hmm. So we just haven't been able to make anything the, the way that it is. But, you know, I, I do plan whatever live performance thing that I do in Mankato here um, to be Beige Interior. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's. Yeah, well, there's probably a whole handful of uh, Triple Falls folks who don't even know that we were Beige Interior. Um, I think that our audience on Triple Falls has grown a bit since then and that we didn't really connect them all very much. So, um, yeah, Beige Interior being our our musical performance leg of our our projects. um, Yeah, or I mean, because you got Conundrum and that was kind of like mm -hmm. we're doing a lot of DJ stuff and I really... I don't know. It it just came together for us because we were how this basically all started, how triple falls, how everything started was you were talking about using Ableton when we were working in the rounders kitchen. Mm -hmm. And, um, I was like, I'm going to buy a drum machine and make drum and bass. Mm -hmm. And I bought the worst drum machine imaginable. 
or one of the worst drum machines imaginable. <laughs> and like we just made unlistenable noise for like a year, you know, uh -huh. at least. Um, and we eventually turned it into something that was okay, good. And we were getting into the open mic scene and we were just kind of like kicking around the idea of working with someone else. And I was playing with Megan and Ocho and Megan came over for a jam. And that first day we wrote, we had been working on the line from underwater, which was a song we had and Megan just like put words on it. And it was like, right. We, we just, the, the chemistry was there. We knew it was going to work. Mm -hmm. I don't, I've what, how, how was that experience for you? I don't, I guess like I previously, what I started for me for like open mic and that's kind of how I met everybody that I had networked out here with. And like, I met you at red rocks at the bar when there was open mics there and, Ocho kind of introduced me to people, but that experience, it wasn't too like uncommon for me to like help people write. Mm -hmm. But that being said, you guys were for sure about what you wanted to do. You kind of already had a setup going. And when it was that easy to get everything together, like the missing puzzle pieces for me, like I can't just like sit down, write a song, record it and have it sound great. Mm -hmm. And then between you and Willis with your, like your technical abilities and also like putting forth your opinions on like, Hey, we should change this around. It's going to sound better. It's going to flow better. No electro swing. <laughs> <laughs> electro swing pop. No electro swing pop. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but like all of that, it did. It just, it, there wasn't any other, there's no other word for it. It clicked. It went well together. Like every single piece was there. And it was just like, oh, okay, we're going to put some more music down. We're going to work on this. We're going to work on the set list. And, you know, it just kind of came. Yeah. And, and practice was fun. Like we just had, a, it was a really great time. And, mm -hmm. and you know, for being well received was nice too. <laughs> like we, we ended up like on our first show, we booked like three more shows, right? We had people just walk up to us and be like, Hey, come do this and do this and do this. And yeah. it just went well for us. And I think that that we carried that inertia well. Mm-hmm. It, it made it really fun. It felt like there was some energy behind it when I think before that all of us had had a couple of projects that like didn't, didn't really have that. <laughs> but yeah. with, with that energy, what, what went from it was we, that really was pr one of the things that pivoted us into triple falls. It's like, Oh, we're not doing that. Like triple falls is an idea and we were acting upon it, but we started talking more about doing stage shows with the idea of an extra amount of production around them to like amp them up and bring people in there and doing more mm -hmm. on the, the front and back end of the production. And uh, that, that's kind of the whole idea behind what Triple Falls was or yeah. the earliest idea, which is, you know, currently turned into all of the things that we do now. Mm -hmm. It's been a, been a whole journey. Yeah. The beige interior was... Um, fun in that like and and one of the things that i think uh, was uh, likable about it was that it was just a little bit different like um and there, there's a lot of stuff like it i guess but it felt different for this area with it being a little bit more electronic and like a, a little bit confusing for people like i think it was tougher to grasp than some than your regular show which kind of caught the caught the eyes and ears I mean, some of the songs were weird. There was, there was a couple of them that were like really spaced out. Yeah. I don't think we really followed any writing structure. That's one of those things that I really liked about the band was because we didn't have to follow a writing structure, just a way that we put the music together. And we had to, like, there was something being said that was meaningful, even if you couldn't understand it. It was, it was there. <laughs> it was there. Uh, cryptic maybe, but. Uh -huh. It was fun. Like it was a lot of fun for me because I didn't feel any pressure to put my lyrics into a certain format. Mm, no, it was just yeah. I, I can totally see that. There was if, if you can imagine Megan at practice, like laying on the floor, mumbling into a <laughs> microphone. <laughs> Willis is programming a synthesizer, and I'm like trying to make a bass line. <laughs> Practices right that? there. The bass gun. Boom. Yeah, I forgot about the bass gun. <laughs> I missed that. 
I'll see if I can find a clip. Maybe uh, is there like there can't possibly be base gun clips. Oh, mm-hmm. for sure. If you doesn't have one, I probably do. There might be one around. Terrible. <laughs> The old uh, attic practice space that we had going on. And then you had the beanbag chairs. Yeah, it was nice. I was always sitting in the beanbag chair. Mm. I think they were more of like a floor support. So I think it was, it was that was the laying on the floor part. But yeah, they were there. Because the one song, it just didn't sound right if I was standing up. I had to be laying down to really get that breathy sound. Did we ever perform it like that? I wanted to, but I don't think we ever did. I think I was chickened out before. <laughs> I don't think we never realized the way that, like we had the this idea for how we wanted the stage show to go and we almost kind of got it at the end. Mm-hmm. Like you started integrating lights into your table and there was a whole bunch more stuff that was supposed to get developed for how we wanted this to look. Yeah. But like, you know, often we were just kind of, I think we played one show at the, uh, what was that? The uh, Emmy Friends Arts Guild, where the stage was like, oh my god, yeah, <laughs> the little corner stage, yeah, the little corner stage, and you could move like one sixteenth of an inch. But that was really cool because in the middle there was um, someone doing aerial silks, which was super cool, and it was during an like an art open house, mm-hmm. and we were we were it was probably the coolest. I think it might have been our coolest show because we were doing what the way the music, I think we intended it to be digested in the first place. It was this Mm. super, like it, it was, you know, designed to be what, what was before Megan came around, we called it, um, what was it? Elevator lounge music or something. It was, we had a, we had dance music. I have to remember. It's not going to be right now. It was, it was like a chill kind of, easy listening environment thing the our other good one was uh under the bridge at the the, oh uh, yeah that was cool the starving artists yeah that was a lot of fun we just didn't have any drums on that one (laughs) 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 yeah it's all good no it's it's a fun it was fun for all of us to get a little bit. Well, I I hadn't performed as a musician really before that band. So it was a really fun opportunity to explore that a little bit more and um, figure out practicing and performance. And when you have to coordinate it with, with two other people who, who like are contributors to the artistic vision, there's something, there's something special there where it's like unique to the, I don't know, to the situation that you've created or uh, different than what you might do on your own. Because we, we all kind of shared responsibility in a way that I haven't, I haven't really seen before, where you kind of often have a really lead person who, who kind of takes charge of things or who writes for the band. But we sort of all just like got together and mashed it out mm-hmm. and then it sometimes worked pretty well and other times was like all over the place. Well, we are, we had, we had strong communication. Like you and I had strong communication going in, which made pretty good legs for the band. I think mm-hmm. that ended up working. Um, and you, you just, you just go, you know? <laughs> yeah. You were like, Hey, be here at this time. I was like, all righty. I'll be 20 minutes late. <laughs> 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 that that is true at least true. you had coffee when you showed up <laughs> i did oh my god i had to <laughs> oh plus it was always cold up there i feel like i just remember it being so cold most of the times we were up there i think we hit it all in in the like winter season or because what what was it we there was definitely a summer it was hot up there for a while too oh, we, yeah. i just don't I, i'm a lizard person so i don't notice i don't i don't care if it's mm. like gross and hot i like that kind of we did have to practice down in the living room on occasion i think oh because yeah. of the heat well, i don't know it, it, it was it was yeah I, understand. I remember that now so it wasn't always cold but it was it was pretty cold up there we'd be like running the space heaters on a blowing the power I just remember wearing my fuzzy socks and my slides. I remember that too, scarred. I know, because I would jam my big foot fuzzy socks into tiny little slides. So like my toes would just look fluffy and the rest of my foot would just look fluffy. 
Wait, slides? What are you? Yeah, I'm unfamiliar slides, with like, that term as well. You know what I'm talking about? Like they look like sandals, but they have one strap on them. Yeah, like a flip flop. Like a flip flop, but just one strap that goes yeah. over your that goes over your toe part. I never shower heard shoes? them called slides. You call those shower shoes? No. I wear those with socks. I still do it. People make fun of me. They should. I mean, it's like <laughs> it's it's your it's socks and sandals. That's like the classic. I mean, I I also not like wear... dad sandals. <laughs> I I do the same thing. I don't care, but like that, you you like you know when you're like strapping Velcro sandals on top of your socks that someone's gonna be like, <laughs> and you just you just have to have you're comfortable with that. I know you're Guilty. comfortable with that. Oh yeah, it's uh that's that's one of your uh, what is it? it's like one of those benefit. It's like a it's like the good and the bad in the same thing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Is that just making fun of someone for being comfortable or is there like some is this fashion shaming or it's, it's like a mix between like, I'm glad you're comfortable, but you kind of look like shit. High five. It's like, <laughs> I, I don't get it. it's like the pineapple on pizza thing. It's not real. Like no one, no one really <laughs> feels that way. Or I mean, even like Nickelback, it's the same thing. Like, <laughs> oh like, yeah, like, no, that's not what I want to listen to all the time. But like, I've heard worse bands for people to be like, oh, this is the worst music ever produced. It's like, that's not true. Mm -hmm. But people say it. And I think people just like having to say something, you know? True. Like pineapple on pizza is bad. It's delicious. Yeah. I'm indifferent. I think it can be good when I'm in the mood for it. Yeah. I'm a big fan, yeah, personally. Me too. I, that's one of the first things I'd go for. I love, I love uh -oh. sweet heat pizzas. I can ju I can see the uh, headlines now. Triple Falls likes pineapple pizza. Oh man, we're gonna lose followers. Canceled. Yeah, if when Texas Roadhouse is running a, their attack campaign against <laughs> us, <laughs> like, pineapple pizza lovers say it's disgusting. <laughs> what do they know? Uh, well, what's next? Um, I got I got nothing. I'm just hanging out. Mm. I know. I'm trying to think of something. There's so many things I want to say, but I'm just like, just, you can I, just say I want them. this to be like kind of family friendly. Oh, does everyone remember our uh, recording sesh out in the forest? Rasmussen. That was horrible. Getting eaten alive. By the f mosquitoes. mosquitoes. But I showed that to some people in Vegas and they thought it was just phenomenal. They were like, wow, this is ingenious. You guys really like you just... <laughs> Because, I mean, it's desert. So they were just blown away. They were like, he just plugged it into a tree. And everyone, <laughs> like, they were so... Okay, I'm not... I'm just going to say this. They're not the brightest people. So they were just astounded. They were like, is that how it sounds? Like, is that what you do? And I was like, oh, yeah. Um, out where I'm from, like, we just plug our freaking amps into trees and stuff. <laughs> well, they've never seen a tree. They, what do they do? Plug their guitars into cactuses? Yeah, apparently. <laughs> uh, they uh, thought it was pretty cool that was that was that was miserable like that was actually we had we have had one other shoot we did a shoot with um uh another one of our friends melissa where we just got i don't know what it was mm -hmm. it was the date but it was just getting eaten to the point where it was it was unbearable yeah that was pretty cool. That was for Moonfest, which actually did Moonfest get no, we, we performed at Moonfest. It's this Moonfest that got canceled. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or I actually I don't know what's going on with Moonfest. We're gonna find out. Coming soon. I thought Moonfest was really cool too. Yeah, that was fun. I I I I thought playing that stage was cool and I like where it was at. It was like just I don't know, it was cool. And for some reason I also thought Casota was like very far away. <laughs> and I just learned that it wasn't by going there one time. <laughs> they put us on the on the big stage. Mm -hmm. Well, they only had one stage. I don't care. We're on the big stage. <laughs> I don't have to tell people how many stages there were. I'm just going to be like, we're on the big stage. It wasn't like solstice. <laughs> <laughs> that broke my heart a little yeah. bit. I'm not yeah, it lie. was fine. It was it was something else. But uh, yeah, what was that? I think that I think that's like nearly every show we played. <laughs> yeah, just recap everything. 
The yeah. wine cafe, though, that one was, that had to be one of the most fun shows I think we had. I know we the did a lot of one? really cool ones. Yeah, but. No, that was the second one because we had Sorry. two shows on the first day we ever performed. That was, place was yeah. packed, though. Like, we had a bunch of people in there just for us, and it was so cool because they have those hanging trees in there with the mm -hmm. lights. It definitely worked in our favor. Yeah, it was it was very beige. It was a good vibe. Good vibes. We've had some fun uh, DJ shows there too, over the over the years. Were you able to catch any of those? Yeah, I caught like? one where you were DJing. I had glow sticks on. Remember? Was that after the starving artist party? That Actually, was yeah, like I the, think it was another goofy double header. Yeah, it was because yeah. I don't. I had glow sticks on me for some reason. I just remember swinging a bunch of glow sticks around. <laughs> Do I not remember this? I mean, I'm sure you were probably the most sober person in the room. Probably, yeah. I, I feel like every time, every time we've had a, a wine cafe, like uh, any of those times where we kind of like turned it into the club, it's always really fun. Um, <laughs> that time with the Sublime show, there was a <laughs> we did this. We did this uh, one where we we had a dance party in the wine cafe, and at Vetterstone there was a Sublime show, and it got out, and everyone was just like walking down like downtown from there, and like all of these Sublime fans just came in, and so it was like already like a different wine cafe crowd, and then like these people came in, and there was way too many people in the wine cafe, and someone kicked a hole in the bar. Um, <laughs> there's still a hole in the bar. Um, and they, it, it just got completely out of control, like as out of the control as the wine cafe gets, but it was, it was super fun. And I think that was the last one we did before it changed hands because, mm. uh, the Dinsmores bought it from Mike and Diane mm. after that. That was, I think that was also the day I found out that, that was happening. I could be totally wrong about that though. I'm not sure. Mm. Yeah. The wine cafe got sold while you were gone. I know a lot of things have changed. Red rocks gone forever you're gonna make me cry on air <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm so glad that someone could cry over red rocks being okay gone. that that broke my heart you have no idea i called janelle in tears i was like they closed, wink. They closed red rocks and i was just a whole mess because that was one of my happy places yeah i'm i'm there's a hole there's a giant gaping hole in mankato because there's no place to dance like there's just not like, yeah, you can go dance at Rounders technically, and that's that's fun and good, and you should have a good time and go do that if that's what you want to do. But it's not it's not the same. It's not designed for that. It, they just move tables out. There's no dance floor, you know? Mm -hmm. And they're just, I don't think such a place exists in Mankato anymore. I just have way too, memories in that, too many memories in that building. And, like, that was the place for me. Like, that was, like, the heart of my experience in Mankato. And I know that... To some people, that might sound really sad, but they don't even know. It's like it was the hub for music. There were shows yeah. there. Like my homies, you guys worked there. Like I was constantly bothering you guys. People don't know anything about Red Rocks. Like I hear all kinds of things. Even Like I would have people, well, I worked there. Well, I was managing Red Rocks. People would explain Red Rocks to me. And I, I just like, I, I never did it, but I just was like screaming in my head. I'm like, I, I'm the subject matter expert. Like, I know exactly what goes on. I'm there. I live there. What are you talking about? But, it, you know, it, the, the, most of the people who went there weren't even college students. I think it, maybe, you know, half of the people who went there were college students. There was, you know, all of these people who just live here and liked that environment. And, you know, they're just out there somewhere now mm -hmm. occupying space that isn't Red Rocks. Wow, what a way to be. Yeah. That was so depressing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. Well, we've given it the postmortem a couple of times on the show, but that was a thorough recap. Well, it's not technically dead. It'll be maybe back, mm. you know. It's not going to be the same. It'll be it'll just well, be a place called Red Rocks. We'll make it the same. Come back and try. <laughs> and, and don't tempt me because you know I would do some crazy stuff like that. Mm. <laughs> He's laughing because he knows it's true. <laughs> I could imagine. Yeah. All right. Well, let's um, let's let's wrap let's wrap this guy up a little bit. Any any we want to do any final rundowns 
Are, do you have anything to promote, Megan? Usually we, we have guests who can promote stuff. Are you promoting I mean, anything? I am my brand and I am here, so I am promoting myself. Check out Megan's music. She's a beautiful singer. I also got into upcycling clothes again. And I have like a page on Facebook for all of my home decor and painting stuff. That's oh. cool. Creative. How long you been doing that stuff? Uh, I started doing like resin art. So I'll use acrylic paint instead of resin because it's better for the environment anyway. Resin's not too good for the environment. And so I started doing those and I started selling them. And I kind of just have a bunch of random art pieces. Hmm. And I started sculpting again with like polymer clay. So I just been putting, dumping pictures every so often onto a Facebook page for that. Oh, what's that called? That's cool. Art. Art home and decor. Art art. I can't oh. remember the exact name, but it's along the. We're gonna. Back. It'll be in the link. Click the link. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Cool. All right. Well, thanks for dropping in. It was good to see you. Um, always is, despite you like running up on me in my house on, and when I wasn't oh, yeah. expecting you were even in the state. That was a little alarming. So. Sorry. Maybe we can. That was me. I I, I made sure that happened. Yeah, she, no. she said you knew. She and he said was standing in front of me too. It was exciting. I uh, certainly no regrets. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Beware! I might show up on your doorstep next. <laughs> Some people start freaking out. We'll just call it good there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming on the show. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.